This is unit 3F, it deals with car safety. So at the bottom here we've got velocity again, which is a combination of distance, time and direction. And we've also got mass, this property of matter. Now if we multiply these two things together we get the concept of momentum. Now momentum is a measure of how difficult it is to get something moving or how difficult it is to slow something down or decelerate it. So for instance if you have an object moving towards you at 50 kilometers per hour are you worried about it? Well if it was a car you would be, if it was a tennis ball you wouldn't be. And if we reverse the argument if you had an object moving towards you that was a few grams would you be worried? Not if it was lobbed at you but if it was a bullet and it was moving at a few hundred meters per second you would be. So momentum is mv and over here we can see it as part of this formula here which says rate of change of momentum so momentum divided by t is force which is how Newton originally formulated or stated this concept but we can see that if we look here uh, v over t is acceleration, how quickly is your velocity changing. So these two expressions are very closely related. So let's have a look at crumple zones and what this does is it allows you to crash more slowly essentially. So there's a deliberate weak front to the car and a deliberate weak back, you can see it in the blue here. The green part, the cabin is still very strong, we don't want the person being crushed but the front and the back of the car act like pillows essentially. So well, what's going on here? Let's have a look at the animation over here. The red car has no crumple zone so it has a large force over a short time and hopefully you can see this is this equation again just multiplied both sides by t so big F small t. In contrast here we have the crumple zone so it's the same momentum, same m, same v but the t is much larger, a longer period of time as it's slowing down and that means we have a smaller force and therefore less injuries, so it's going to be safer. Now here we can see the car, this part, the cabin is pretty well intact but we can see the front is fairly well destroyed. In contrast to an old-fashioned car, the car actually survives better but we're more concerned about people than cars. So that's crumple zones. We also have seat belts and again we want slower deceleration here. Here there's no seat belt and the deceleration is very abrupt. So that's a very large force from the dashboard here in a small amount of time. So it's exactly the same concept, slowing the person down. In the bottom line here we have someone with a seat belt on and the, the deceleration starts straight away. So you've got all this distance, if you like, or time to decelerate. So again we have a smaller force. Now there's also something called anti-lock braking, so first of all we have to understand what um, it means for brakes to be locked and it means that the wheels stop moving. Now you might think that was the quickest way to stop, but it isn't. It's actually better to keep the wheels turning just before the locking happens and that's what anti-lock braking does. See the car on the left is conventional brakes and you can see the ABS there. So you can see that the ABS car has slowed down more, they were going the same speed, it slowed down more and it was still able to steer and avoid the obstacle here. So in this case we actually get faster deceleration. You can't kill yourself just by braking, the force will never be uh, strong enough, but we actually want to increase that braking force. So car safety then, we have a number of innovations, crumple zone, seat belt and anti-lock braking, all of which reduce the force, or two of which reduce the force, um, by increasing the time.